are the top five hits at the South African box office over the past weekend. Stepping down into number five is the science fiction action thriller, The Maze Runner. Dropping two spots this week to number four is the animated adventure, Planes, Fire and Rescue. Despite a smashing opening weekend, Dracula Untold also drops two spots to number three. Surprisingly, swimming up the chart this week is the sequel, Dolphin Tale 2. And dominating the international and local box office is the critically acclaimed film, Gone Girl. And those are the movies at the top of our box office for the past weekend, as JP contemplates how he's going to get a beach body like that dude over there, but complaining that he can't because he spends his entire week eating popcorn and <laughs> drinking soft drinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, don't worry, lad. There's still a long time to go. You can, Thanks, you can sit man. up now. <laughs> I, I can tell you the, the, the regimen for the one ab. <laughs> you definitely got that on lockdown. But let's talk quickly about <laughs> the movies that we can expect Thanks. to feature this weekend that might uh, you know, make it onto your top list, possibly. What are we looking at? Uh, well, first up is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, really? Is it that time again? It's it's close to Christmas. And, <laughs> okay. And and uh, oh, you, you, okay. You didn't say it's this teenage mutant. I'm sorry. Okay, I know they look like they were action figures that someone experimented the with. The guy on the left who's Easy Donatello. I don't know. It's kind of Forrest Whitaker. It looks going like on. a modern day Sangoma, but anyway, okay, it's, sure. Um, <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, it's actually funny that you where you should like respond with surprise because the Transformers as well because this is also you know Michael Bay had his hands on this too and and yes she were in there too um, like their design was also kind of wacky like a car th shoved through a hurricane through a junkyard but it, it works because I mean I think we're way past the point where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are like cute characters and like they need to be really like kind of guys right um, well you can be with like you know also maintaining some sort of comic kind of aspect. Like, the, the the Henson's one was the one from the 90s where they were actually, like, human puppets and not CG and That's stuff like that. And you must remember the Jim Henson studio also animated the those black aliens from, from the movie Alien with okay, the creepy yes. um, Anyway, my, my thing is I'm not sure, not because of nostalgia or anything like that, because I grew up wanting to be Donatello because I thought April O'Neil was hot growing up. Because for well, the first time I did karate, I asked the, the sensei, how do I learn boast off? Because if I leave Expresso this morning <laughs> and a rat in an alley says, follow me and I will train you, and I would put all of this behind me, <laughs> is not the reason that I wouldn't touch this. It's Michael Bay don't have a good record, seriously. It's, okay. It's, it's kind of not being... All right, okay, record. well, that, that, that's a bit of a downer. Uh, this is where I leave you. What about uh, this one? Um, so, hey, uh, this has... Hey, uh, this is gu the guy who plays uh, Peter Russo in House of Cards. He's, he, he was brilliant in that. He's kind of, like, expressionless compared to everyone else. He's, he's, and he's dead center. It's eerie to me. Uh, but uh, speaking of expressionless, Jason Bateman is the lead. Yes. And when I watched all the sort of uh, previews for this and all, he doesn't seem totally invested in this. Maybe because, I don't know, they, they're trying to concentrate. He's also the lead, obviously, from Arrested Development. Yes, yes. Hilarious TV show, and they're making a movie of that. Oh, my goodness, okay. I don't know if this would be practice, because it's kind of as the Bluth setup, a wacky family that, where they've all got to deal with a father being the central issue. They, 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 the family has to come together and deal with the passing of their yes, father. Yes, yes, yes. And it's, you know, shenanigans, and ooh, look how loopy and crazy we are. I hope it's okay. I'm not sure that Tina Fey, who is superb, uh, Jason Bateman, who is great, and this fellow, I can't remember his name, he's from Girls uh, TV show as well. Yeah. Great comics. Are they all being wrapped up into the same, like the right kind of story? Okay. Well, we'll maybe see. have a look and, and let us know what I'm looking forward to, and I'm hoping you're going to give it a good review, is this movie here, uh, The 100-Year-Old Man, um, who climbed through his window and disappeared. I bought the book, ironically, at the airport the one time. Uh. I was bored and I was looking through the collection. I was like, oh, well, that looks like a very good title. That's bought the book. <laughs> Haven't really gotten to grips with it yet, but give us a synopsis. Okay, so uh, what you must know is, uh, just, just to be fair, like I'm not reviewing anything here, so I could be talking complete rubbish until I see it and go, mm. well, actually, you know, Kat's got a lovely point. Not that I ever disagree with you necessarily. But <laughs> All these provisos and caveats and T's and C's. Uh, the 100-year-old man who climbed through the window and disappeared, I just love saying that title, that's yeah. pleasing, um, is this gentleman who's lived a full life. He, uh, you know, was an explosives expert for uh, in, in World War II, if I remember correctly. He uh, hitchhiked with Winston Churchill. He met Harry S. Truman, uh, the President of the United States at that time. Mm. Uh, he's done everything there is, you think, can be done. So yes. you think, well, you know, at your 100th year, you kind of just sort of kick back and, and relax. Yeah, exactly. Except on his birthday, he climbs through the window, he's like, stuff this. 
going to start that adventure all I over again. I need more adventure in my life. And gets embroiled into this almost like fear and loathing in Las Vegas kind of like uh, joyride um, across the world with yeah. loads of money that belongs to a drug dealer. So it's it's grandpa shenanigans with like uh, almost like a teen road trip kind of movie, which well, is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm hoping like there's that. some deep thought to it that we can learn some life lessons from I'm it. Sure but listen, it's fun as well. That's those are the three movies, but you got to stay tuned because later on we'll be taking a look at a movie that has gotten JP so excited. He says it could very well be his ultimate movie of 2014. Take a look at this. This is why. Now, as in the beginning, I belong to the front. You belong to the tail. When the foot seeks the place of the head, a sacred line is crossed. Know your place. Keep your place. Be a shoe. have it. The movie's called Snowpiercer and we'll be talking about it a bit later on with JP. But right now, Graham, what's coming up in the rest of the show, mate?